Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you are doing all kinds of good. Today is going to be part one in a series of videos taking you through my entire tarot and oracle deck collection. This is something that is a bit of a almost guilty pleasure of mine that I like to watch other people's deck collection videos. But there's also something very satisfying about the idea of, of getting all my decks out and going through them and doing a bit of a inventory almost. I do have a spreadsheet where I keep track of what decks I've got, whether they're Oracle, Tarot, Mass Market, Indie, etc. I thought it would be fun to do some videos. So I'm splitting this into Oracle, which is today's video, mass market tarot decks and indie tarot decks and then I think I'm gonna do a fourth video with my collection of tarot and tarot related books because those are both things, decks and books are both things I want to try and slow down my purchasing of this year so the idea of having this kind of inventory at the start of the year feels very appropriate. So I have been on a bit of an oracle deck journey this year I started out the year owning a few oracle decks but not really sure exactly how I best liked to use oracle decks, how they could be beneficial or valuable, interesting within my practice and not really knowing what kinds of oracle deck that I liked. I've made a few videos, I've got a little playlist which I will link if you're interested. I have quite a variety of, of like some deck themes and some are very specific about a certain topic and some are more general and can be used in lots of different situations with lots of different kind of emotions attached to them, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm, I'm really liking where my little Oracle deck collection is at and I'm excited to dive deeper into the ones that need diving deeper into. So without much further ado, because I think this is going to be a long one, I'm going to get into it. This is Oracle Decks. I will list everything in the description box. If they're indie, I will try and link to where you can get a legit copy if the deck is still in print. Uh, and that's about it. Let's go. Okay, so these are going to be in no particular order beyond indie and mass market. And since the indie decks are the smaller pile, I am grabbing for those first. First up, we have the Outgrow Yourself Tarot and Oracle. I use this more as an oracle deck, which is how it ended up in this half of the video, um, or in this video of the series rather. I use this in tandem with other tarot decks. I think the artwork is really cool. It's based on the Thoth, so the majors have the Thoth names. And the courts also have the Thoth names. I'm saying the majors have the Thoth names, but it's justice rather than adjustment, so I don't know. Anyhow, I really like the little messages. I really like the art style. I love the backs and I've edged it in yellow to match. Yeah, I just think this is really cool and I'm extremely pleased to have it in my collection. This is one of the first Oracle decks I bought and it is still one of my favorites. Okay, next up, this is a recent addition to my collection. This was actually gifted to me by the lovely Sarah at Tangy Tarot. I wasn't expecting this at all and I was taken by surprise in the best way. So this is the Raincoast Dreams Oracle, an intuitive oracle deck based on the dreamscapes of Christoph James. And it's this gorgeous, very colourful, very kind of dreamy, as appropriate, dreamy and hazy imagery with little messages. Do not mix up what we think with what actually is. Take pleasure in the elimination of craving. A skilled man can observe without evaluation. They're quite, um, like affirmation style messages. And this one's very new to me, so I haven't worked with it much yet, but I'm really looking forward to trying to pair it with some tarot decks and see what I get out of having this deck in my collection. So the Reclaim Oracle is another one that was a very early deck, early Oracle deck in my collection. This is by the same uh, creator of the Lilitha Tarot. And I think this is, this is 90 cards and it's basically a feelings deck. So we've got validation, resilience, disconnection, rejection, discouragement, and uh, black, my edges, black and this pale pink imagery, Ooh. which is the same with the backs. 
and this is a, a really unique deck I think it's a really special deck this opens the door for a lot of intuition based readings either just with this deck or in tandem okay I lost a light we've been having technical issues apparently uh, I was saying this is yeah it leads to some really intuitive readings either by itself or in tandem with tarot and letting the keywords guide the tarot pools using the tarot cards to connect with or give some kind of action oriented meaning to the oracle cards I really really appreciate this deck and it's been very valuable in my practice okay this one I believe in this very nondescript beige bag I think this is the Hellenic oracle yes this is available on make playing cards and this is created by Thea at Garden Goddess Tarot. I'm now second guessing that that's her channel name but she created this deck because she wanted a Greek. Um, it's deities, it's places like the Ashvidal Meadows, um, deities and places and I think also heroes and figures. I am not as well versed in ancient Greek myth as I would like to be and that was the intention of purchasing this deck. In all honesty have I reached for this much since I bought it? No but I have it and it's available for me to dig into as and when that feels like something I want to do. It's all made from existing artwork with the Greek and the trans transliteration, is that the word? Um, into English. I recognise a lot of figures. There's my, my Aphrodite. I re recognise a lot of figures. There's a lot of figures that I don't particularly recognise. Um, and it's very beautiful and I think it's going to be really special in my practice. I just have to start working with it and, and figure out how I'm best going to work with it. I think that's why I haven't really reached for it because I feel like I need to know how I'm going to work with it before I start, which is silly. So we will not be doing that in 2024. I have here the quest expansion for the spread machine oracle this was also gifted to me by sarah um both of the decks that she gifted to me i received very recently so i've not had much of a chance to get to grips with this one yet but this is as the name would suggest it is a deck that you can build tarot spreads with you can use these as prompts and this being the quest edition it's based on like rpg D, &D fantasy type language and archetypes which I think is incredibly cool because if you know me you know that is my thing and um, I think this is going to be really cool to build some spreads with so using these as prompts to pull tarot cards for and I'm really looking forward to getting to grips with it okay this pouch actually houses two oracles so First up, we'll do the one that the pouch actually belongs to. So this is the, I believe it is called the Oracle of the Crystal World. So I backed the Tarot of the Crystal World on Kickstarter. Whenever I backed it, the deck came in last year and as a stretch goal, it was this 20 card Oracle deck. And I never intended intended isn't the right word but I didn't expect to get this this wasn't something I was looking for when I backed the deck uh, but it's actually fantastic the art style is really gorgeous I think these borders work really nicely and I just love the keywords and reading this with tarot decks is like it's magic um I just I really enjoy it So this was a little surprise addition to my collection almost, or like a bonus addition to my collection because I knew I was getting it, but I didn't get it on purpose as it were. Um, I might as well just show you them all because there's not many, but um, I think it's really cool. I love the colour palette. Visually, aesthetically, it goes with a lot of my decks and like I say, I really like the keywords. I don't tend to go for this kind of single keyword type of a deck but this one's really special. Surrendered Idea is the last one there. 
And the other deck that is currently living in that bag until I find a better home for it is the When Olga Speaks Oracle. So this version is not the final finished version. This was a Kickstarter that didn't succeed. And so it was put up on make playing cards briefly for the people who'd missed out. Uh, this is going to be another Kickstarter and when it is I will back it and get the like the full experience. But in the meantime I'm really glad I have this edition because this analogue collage is a style that I really really love. You'll see that when I get into my tarot decks. Um, and I think the keywords are just really really interesting. This is an oracle deck that has suits which you can kind of see in the different colours. It's really interesting and um, whenever the Kickstarter goes live, I, assuming it's not before this video, I will try and come back to the description and leave it in the description because I want this deck to happen. <laughs> um, so yes, and I think it's brilliant. Joy of the Temple. Like it's just, it's just fantastic. So that is my last indie oracle deck in my collection as of the very beginning of 2024. Alright these are my mass market oracle decks and these again are going to be in no particular order. So this first one is this tiny little divine doors oracle and I think it's actually called, oh it's an inspiration deck. This one's published by Rockpool and I bought this because I thought it was adorable. I loved the architecture focus on the cards and it was also dirt cheap. Um, I did film an unboxing of this but I don't think it's ever made it to YouTube but I do have that somewhere so if you'd be interested in a walkthrough and my thoughts. So the fronts of the cards are all these different photographs of doors and doorways and then on the back we have messages some of which I like some of which not so much like draw down the moon and then we have a little rhyming couplet, silent skill, palmistry, listen to the notes of intuition, patience. I really like this image. So some of the messages I like, some of them are a bit wishy-washy for me. Um, I like my oracle messages to kind of be specific, to hit on something, and a lot. some of these messages, like, yes. And like that's not that's not specific. That doesn't help me in any particular direction. Um, but like passages. So yeah, this is really cute. And like I say, it was dirt cheap. I think this is the same line of decks that does. I know there's like a Fey one that a lot of people enjoy. Um, there's a whole bunch of these dinky little mini inspiration cards. And I'm certainly not mad to have it in my collection. It can be a nice little addition. All right, the Healing Waters Oracle by Rebecca Campbell, artwork by Katie Louise. This is one of those composite photo digital manipulation decks. And this one has this watery, oceany focus. And I think it's very beautiful. And this one again can be a little bit metamorphosis, by the way, one of my absolute favorite keywords. Um, this one can be a little bit on the, more on the love and light side of things, but I don't find that to be too much. And sometimes it's nice to have a deck that's gonna be nice to you. Do you know what I mean? That's basically all there is to it. This is a nice gentle deck. It's got very pretty artwork. And I do like a lot of the keywords. I think this is a, it's either a 40 or a 44 card deck. So that is the Healing Waters Oracle. And in the same vein, I also have the Rose Oracle by the same creators. I bought these two at the same time because pro tip, never buy anything full price from Hay House. I swear they're constantly having a sale. I got these both for like half price and free shipping. Um, and it's, it's very similar, similar art style because it's the same artist. This one is rose based, this one is a little bit more leaning into the divine feminine kind of thing, which isn't something I particularly care for, but it, for the most part, I think it stops short of actually being that. I hope that makes sense. 
um, but this is really beautiful. The colors on this are a little bit more washed out than the than the healing waters, particularly under my bright lights. They're really washing it out a little bit, but um, it's pretty. It's that's all I need. I don't need to be able to say the. De I don't need to be able to see the details particularly, but like some of these are just beautiful. Like, isn't that a gorgeous, gorgeous image? And this one. So yeah, this is another, it's nice, it's gentle. But it also does have some quite, it has some depth to it too. It's positive, this and the healing waters, they're positive without feeling toxic positivity to me. Okay, another watery deck. This is the Sea Soul Journeys Oracle Cards. And I I really like this. I've edged it, so it has four suits, and I've done this edging in different colours to match the suits, which you can see are on the front of the cards too. Um, do I remember off the top of my head what the suits are and what the difference is? No. But that's what the guidebook is there for. So this is sea photography and it's got your title and then um, a little a little message or advice. And I think they are all may you X, Y, Z. So decide, may you navigate with purpose. Free, may your soul sing freely. Shine, may you be a lighthouse. And I just adore the imagery. I adore the ocean. I did... I lived next to, next to, it was like a 40 minute walk. I lived a 40 minute walk from the sea for two years. And there was a lot about that period of my life that was not good, <laughs> but living within walking distance of the sea was wonderful. And I really, really miss it. I love the ocean. And these pictures, especially all the like sunsetty, sun setting on the water, just brings me a sense of peace. And I know that sounds cheesy, but it's true. So I really enjoy having this deck in my collection. I do quite like the guidebook as well. I haven't spoken much about guidebooks because I, for the most part, ignore them with Oracle decks or I want to be able to ignore them. There are some Oracle decks where I really do like working with the guidebook, but I, I like to be able to use them as a supplement to tarot readings and I don't want to have to go to a whole separate guidebook like that's just too much faff on a daily basis and I'm not gonna keep up with it so I like to have oracle decks that I can use on their own and I feel like these do stand on their own really well and again it's advice without being too wishy-washy they're positive without feeling like toxic positivity I like a lot of the keywords I love the ocean imagery I have been waxing lyrical about this deck so there we go that's the sea soul journeys oracle cards Right, this shiny one is the Mystic Martian Oracle. And I'm not doing like a declutter in this video. That's not what these videos are for. They're literally just inventorying, inventorying my collection. But this is one, as much as I love these green edges and this back design, this is one that I might let go of because I think it is really quite cool. I love the like I'm a sci-fi girly like I love the the aliens I think the art style is really cool but it's just got a bit too much of like a star CD vibe um and the more I read the guidebook the more uncomfortable I feel with that because like I say I like to be able to not need the guidebook so I work with this sometimes just with the title and the keywords this is my favorite layout of oracle deck we have a title and then we have multiple keywords multiple kind of directions you can take in or like additional information um and there is a star seed card in this deck but the more I read the guidebook the more that's kind of throughout and that is something that does just make me uncomfortable and I don't really like it so I'm not sure how long this deck is going to stay in my collection but for the meantime it's here and I will say that the art style is really incredibly cool there we go. Starseed. Just not a fan. All right, this is the Secret Language of Colour cards. If I can get in. And these are huge. Like, I know we talk about Oracle decks being oversized, but these cards really are massive. 
I did these edges all rainbowy because like it's a it's a color deck. I had to do the edges to match, right? Um cardstock wise, I don't like these. They're that kind of sticky, glossy, it's really hard to shuffle them. But these are honestly like cheap and cheerful. I don't think I spent much money at all on this deck, which is probably why I bought it because I, I wasn't sure about it, but it is. It's cheap and cheerful. Again, I actually have quite a few Oracle decks that have these like affirmation y, think positive vibes kind of messages to them. But I really enjoy, I really enjoy something. There's something about this deck. I just, I really like it. It's like I say, it's cheap and cheerful. It's simple in a way that I mean, it's simple to incorporate into tarot readings because I feel like this is quite the cards themselves are quite stripped back you've got this image you've got the title and the strip of color to match they don't feel like they're competing with a tarot deck and there's fun things like I can see where the color crops up in the tarot cards I've pulled and try and make some meaning from that I don't know how much I've actually cracked into the guidebook it has entries for each card for the color and then for the message and then it also at the start it has like exercises to align yourself with the color and I think it gets into some chakra stuff which is not something I really know anything about but yeah it's got loads of um little like practices little meditations which um I have barely looked at because I just use the cards as they are. This one obviously, the hot pink, is my favourite. But maybe I do need to dive into the guidebook a little bit more. All right, I have here the Urban Crow Oracle by MJ Cullinane. When you watch my tarot versions of this, of, of going through my tarot deck collection, you will see I am quite the fan of MJ Cullinane's decks. And I really like this oracle. I've come to really, really enjoy her art style. And I think the keywords in this deck are great because they are fairly neutral. And I will actually say that with the, well, for the most part, upheaval. But upheaval doesn't have to be a bad thing. But the imagery does tend to make them feel a little bit more edgy. So this is one that is very much not like a love and light good vibes only kind of a deck you know um it does have cards that can be read that way and i think if you ignore the imagery and focus on the keyword there's a lot of keywords that are pretty neutral which i also do appreciate um, but it's nice to have a bit of an edgier oracle in my collection i remember for a week or so i was reading this with natalie hertz's vampire tarot but that combo was not very friendly. <laughs> it had good messages, they worked well together, but it was not sugarcoating anything. Um, but yeah, MJ Cullinane's Urban Crow Oracle, I really enjoy this. All right, the Citadel Fantasy Oracle. This is published by Liminal 11, and I think this one was also indie before it was mass market. Um, or maybe not, that might not be true. Uh, this is the newest oracle deck in my collection so I'm not overly familiar with it um but these are the backs it has this as you can see cool I like this shape this um is an octagon equal sides exclusively it's got eight sides it's basically had the corners chopped off but um it's actually a really comfy little size to hold size and shape to have it's beautiful this limited color palette with the gold foiled accents and again, we have the title and a couple of keywords. And this one, as the title suggests, is a fantasy oracle. This is based on fantasy stories, fantasy archetypes, as well as like RPGs and D&D &D and that kind of a thing. And a lot of them are, a lot if not all of them, are character archetypes. And I think that's a really interesting angle to have on an oracle deck to read with. And I've only had this a few days, literally. It was a Christmas present and I'm filming this on the 29th of December. Um, but I've been working with it this week with my daily draws and I have been really enjoying it so far. And I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to have lots of ways that I can incorporate this into my readings. 
this one, I don't know if you've clocked the elemental symbols, this one does have suits. I have not read the guidebook yet. Like I say, I like to be able to use an oracle without having to reach for the guidebook. And I like this by itself. I like just the, the title and the keywords. I know the guidebook does get into what the different suits are. And then because this is RPG inspired, the guidebook also has some ways that you can incorporate this into something like a game of D&D &D and use this to help shape your story or shape like encounters and character choices and things. So this is the Citadel Oracle, which so far I'm really, really liking. Okay, this one I talk about all the time. This is the Sustain Yourself Oracle. This is by James Wanless, who also made the Voyager Tarot. This is a chunky, chunky deck of analog collage, which as I've said, I really, really enjoy. Analog collage, and it's all very nature and ecology based. You have a title at the bottom, so this is the nature ecology, like stars, clouds, caterpillar, greening man, danger, lightning, and then there's keywords at the top as well. So we've got man and inspiration, pollination and symbiosis, food and nourishment. And um, this is one that I almost always do reach for the guidebook with, but I think the keywords are interesting enough that I can use it on its own. Like the keywords are expansive enough that I don't feel that I have to reach for the guidebook. I just enjoy reaching for the guidebook, which is made difficult because the guidebook for this deck is fucking massive for no good reason. But regardless, I really enjoy this deck. I talk about it all the time. I think again, because it's nature-based, it's got quite neutral keywords. Even something that's a bit scarier, like the danger keyword, well, like danger isn't, danger itself is, is warning you of something negative or potentially harmful, but the warning is a good thing and sometimes things are dangerous, but you've got to do it anyway. Um, yeah, for the most part, I think the keywords are pretty neutral. And I really like the collage style. So this is this is a winner. This one and the, this wasn't the point of this video to come up with favorite oracle decks, but I think this one and the um, Outgrow Yourself, Tarot and Oracle, which may have been the first, first of the indie decks that I showed. I think those are my top oracle decks in my collection that I kind of wouldn't want to be without. Okay, this is another Hay House deck. This is the Animal Apothecary. I think the colours in this are absolutely gorgeous. It's quite animal focused on the imagery. Metamorphosis, again, metamorphosis. Why can I never say this word? Metamorphosis is one of my favourite words. It's one of my favourite keywords. So this being called the Animal Apothecary, there is a lot of animal imagery in this deck. And when you go to the guidebook, so here, Master Manifester, Raven, and it tells you what Raven's medicine is. So each animal's associations and how that connects with the keyword and, and what they're, there we go, there's the master manifester. How cool is that? Um, how they might guide you through. But again, I don't have to go to the guidebook. I like the keywords just fine on their own. I used to struggle with animal decks. I have a lot of animal decks, tarot decks specifically, which you will see. Um, I used to struggle with animal decks because I felt that because I don't have like a mental bank of associations for animals that I was missing something, like I was missing a level of meaning. And I no longer feel that way for the most part. And I don't feel that way with this, even though, which is odd because it's called the Animal Apothecary. The cards and the keywords are based around the significance of this animal. But I can pretty much ignore that. And I mean that in a, in a nice way. <laughs> I mean that with all the love in the world. Like I can use this just the decks. I don't have to know what the different animals are supposed to symbolize or I can go to the guidebook and I can read the meaning and I can read why this specific animal was chosen with this specific message. So like evolve into your complexity. I think some of the messages are really cool as well. And this, the self-love, self-worth, self-value, self-respect pig. Look at him. 
is he the reason I bought this deck? Maybe. This one is the Fairies Oracle by Brian Froud. And similar to the Hellenic Oracle, in the sense that I don't know, just as I don't know very much, or I don't have in-depth knowledge of Greek myth and Greek deity, I know even less about fairy myth and folklore. And as a result, I have not reached for this too, too much because this is one that personally I need the guidebook for because the titles are the titles of the fairies. And then you've got some of these like forces, like unity. So I can't read this on its own because it just doesn't really mean anything to me in and of itself. Does that make sense? Like, okay, the singer of intuition is actually quite cool. These, I think they're like forces or energies or something. These are, would be fine on their own for me to read with. Like if I pull fairies of the future and this is all I have to go off, I don't really know what to do with that in my own brain. Uh, so I need to use the guidebook and I need to do a little bit of a study of this, I think, and do some more like intentional practice, much like the Hellenic Oracle. And again, much like the Hellenic Oracle, because I don't know where to start, I haven't started, which like I said, is silly because nobody knows anything before they know it. So it is daft to expect myself to know what to do before I know what to do. Does that make sense to anybody else? I hope so. Anyway, this is something I would like to focus on a little bit more in 2024, do a little bit more of a specific practice with. Especially because I've heard really wonderful things about the guidebook and I haven't really, I've referenced a few cards, I've pulled a few cards and referenced them, but I haven't really sat down and read through the guidebook and I think I might be missing out. Right, the penultimate oracle deck in my oracle deck collection is the Heavenly Bodies Astrology Oracle. And this has some of the worst cards stuff in the world. It has this bow, no matter what I do, but life goes on. This is an astrology deck. We have, we have the 12 zodiac signs. We've got these, um, oh God, I forgot what these were called and I've forgotten again, but like opposition, sextile, trine conjunction like that sort of thing um the 12 houses are in here the planets are in here neptune sun aries um we've got like north node and south node we've got the modalities so fixed and then mutable and cardinal are also in here and do we have moon phases i don't think there's moon phases in this one we've got yin and yang which mm, I don't have too much to do with. But anyway, this is an astrology deck. As you can see, the artwork is, is really pretty. And now I'm looking at this, I feel like this might work nicely, visually speaking, with the Healing Waters or the Rose Oracle. But I don't know why I'd read two oracles together. Anyhow, I really like this for lots of reasons. I like that I can pull a card and then again, because we've got multiple keywords, I can use those as prompts but it has a bit more of a meaning behind it because it's associated with a planet or a sign or something in astrology and I'm always trying to improve my astrological understandings. Um, and I like that I can pull, so for instance, if, if Sagittarius was in Pisces, those are both signs, get your brain together. If Venus was in Pisces, I could pull these two oracle cards and just read the keywords to kind of get the gist of what Venus in Pisces looks like. So giving and receiving love, finding value in intimacy, intuition, and compassion. I could do a reading with these two cards. Like I could pull tarot cards for each of these keywords to get an idea of what Venus in Pisces might look like for me. It's a really cool deck. And the guidebook is kind of small but mighty as well. It's got quite a lot of what seems to me like good information in it. I am not any kind of an expert on astrology. There's a lot that I don't know. But from what I do know, I like it. And then finally, 
we have the Tantric Dakini Oracle, which is another one of my latest acquisitions. And so I have not yet done too much work with this. And I fear that I need to read the guidebook with this. Although actually I really like the keywords, so I could probably, it would probably be just fine by itself. Again, I love me some analog collage and I think the keywords are really interesting. But it does come with a big guidebook, which I do want to kind of work my way through and get to know this deck with. And being that I haven't really worked with this yet, I don't think I have too, too much more to say. So I should probably leave it there. I love this death transfiguration card. I'm gonna leave him on top. I'm currently going through a personal um, personal death year. Like my, my personal solar year is what I mean. So from my birthday, um, I'm going through a death year, which is, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> So that's my last Oracle deck. That is that is my entire Oracle deck collection, indie and mass market. So with all of that said and done, I will let you lovely people go because I'm certain this has been a long one. If you've made it this far, if you've stuck with me, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think. And also if you wanna see more of my Oracle deck ramblings, I will link I did a playing with pairs video about halfway through the year with all the oracle decks I had at that point in time. I paired them with a bunch of different tarot decks. So that's that exists. If you would like to go see it, I'll link it below. I will also link the video that I did discussing how I kind of create tarot spreads with oracle cards. Because there's a couple of different ways I use oracle to kind of shape a tarot reading. So I will link that below as well if that is of interest to you. And and that is that. That is everything I have to say. I really will let you go this time. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, give me a like if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and drop me a comment to let me know what you thought. I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.